We started last time by uh, introducing the idea of what I call persistent diffusion. So, we will take this up today, we will look at this problem today and I uh, will point out what its connection to a dichotomous Markov process is and we will see how it differs from ordinary diffusion. So, we will get back to the diffusion limit and so on and so forth. It is a very, very popular model and a very useful model of uh, a continuous random process. So, what is the problem? Uh, it is as follows and I called it uh, persistent diffusion, but let me give its proper name dichotomous diffusion is a better name. Dichotomous or persistent and I will explain why it is called persistent. Uh, we have in mind a particle diffusing along the x axis exactly as in the normal diffusion problem, but this time I specify the velocity of the particle to be fixed to be some finite value, but capable of reversing in direction. So, it either moves to the right or to the left with some fixed velocity c some speed c. So, if I call the process x, x dot of p is equal to a dichotomous Markov process in the sense that it takes values plus c or minus c. So, xi of t and this fellow is a dichotomous Markov process taking values plus c or minus c. And the question is what are the statistical properties of the process x itself which is the integral if you like of a dichotomous Markov process. Remember that uh, the normal the usual diffusion problem we had x dot equal to square root of 2 d times eta of t where this fellow here was a Gaussian white noise and therefore, this x became a Wiener process and this process was not differentiable anywhere it had all these strange properties it satisfied the probability density function satisfied the normal diffusion equation, but now the question is what happens if I integrate a dichotomous noise here with these values what answer would I get what sort of probability density would I get and so on. We can actually sketch this function without too much difficulty because you can see that schematically if this is a dichotomous Markov process what it does is to flip between plus c and minus c at random intervals of time. So, this is c and this is minus c this is what the process x dot does or xi of t does. And when it is plus c x is uniformly increasing with time linearly and when it is minus c it is decreasing with time in the other direction. So, it is a it is immediately clear that if I plotted uh, t versus x of t not in this case, but in the other case then if it is going up in time it does that as a function of time and then it uh, decreases with speed minus c then goes up again and decreases and so on. So, it does something like this. It is a lot more smooth looking except for these points of direction reversal it is a lot more smooth looking than a very jagged curve that Brownian motion actually is or a Wiener process is. Okay. So, in that sense this is expected to be a milder process in a certain sense more handleable more tractable and we would like to see what its statistical properties are. Okay. Now, you can get to this in several ways you can get to the probability density for this guy in several ways, uh, but let me just write down. So, this implies that x of t equal to integral 0 to is equal to x of t minus x of 0 is equal to integral 0 to t dt prime xi of t prime. So, in some sense you want the integral of uh, a dichotomous process. we can find out what the correlation of this is etcetera etcetera we will do that shortly, but the process itself in a typical realization would look like this in this fashion. Okay. So, as you can see everywhere 
there is this basic idea of a Poisson sequence sitting everywhere. These points where this thing undergoes reversal are supposed to form an uncorrelated Poisson sequence of points and we have already studied what a Poisson pulse process does. Okay. We can we know what its correlation is and so on and so forth. Just as a digression let me remind you of what this whole thing is. If you took uh, the several ways of defining a Poisson sequence of points, but the way one convenient way is to say the following is to say that on the time axis you have a whole lot of epochs or instants of time which are completely uncorrelated with each other. So, this is T j, T j plus 1 dot dot, this is T j minus 1 dot 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 completely independent of each other and now let us the statement is that in any finite interval of time the probability that you have n of these crosses is Poisson distributed with some mean rate. So, if you say uh, for example, if you start with uh, the number in 0 to time t n of 0 t that is a random variable. The number of such epochs occurring in a given time interval 0 to t is a random variable can take on any integer value any non negative integer value and one can ask uh, what is the distribution of this n here. So, the probability that this is equal to some integer r some non negative integer r is a Poisson distribution. So, this guy is equal to e to the minus lambda t lambda t to the power r over r factorial and r equal to 0 1 2 etcetera. This lambda is called the intensity of the process it is the mean rate at which these crosses occur. Okay. And these t's are independent of each other. So, we can actually define a Poisson sequence in another way which is to say that the mean that the gap between two successive crosses is distributed exponentially. The probability that if uh, you have a, a cross at t equal to 0 the probability that you do not have a cross till time t is goes like e to the minus lambda t that is it. So, several ways of defining this we also define it yet another way by saying in any interval delta t any infinitesimal interval delta t there are only two possibilities either there is a cross in it with probability lambda delta t or there is no cross in it with probability 1 minus lambda delta t. The probability of two or more crosses occurring in a delta t is a higher order in uh, infinitesimal. So, there are several equivalent ways of handling this yet another way is to say that this is Poisson distributed and different non overlapping intervals are independent of each other completely independent of each other. So, n of 0 t and n of 2 t comma 3 t for example, they are not overlapping intervals these are independent random variables completely. What would the correlation of this n be? What would the autocorrelation of this n of 0 t be? So, let us let us call this uh, fellow uh, let us leave it like that. So, what is n of 0 t prime n of 0 t what would this be? Uh, let us be very definite let us say 0 less than t prime less than t. What is this expectation value likely to be this autocorrelation? Do you think it is a function of t minus t prime? Remember the statistics of these t's, the sequence t's, uh, this uh, sequence t j, it is a stationary sequence in the sense that the mean rate lambda is independent of time. Whether you look at this interval as 0 to t or whether you look at it as t naught to t naught plus t, whatever t naught is, it does not make a difference. You get exactly the same distribution. Okay. So, in that sense, it is stationary. So, my question now is do you think n of 0 t prime which is a random variable is independent of n of 0 t? If that were true then I can remove this average I can write this average of this product as a product of averages. Uh, 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 incidentally what is this equal to? What is this guy equal to? Exactly it is lambda t it is lambda t it is a Poisson distribution and the average value is lambda t. 
So, of course, it says that if the interval increases, the number of points in it will increase with the mean rate lambda. So, it is proportional to lambda t. Hmm. What is the variance of n of 0 comma t? Also lambda t, also lambda t, right. Now, let us look at what this fellow is. Do you think first of all, it is a function of t minus t prime? First of all, do you think that these two are random variables which are independent of each other? No, because there is an overlap, there is certainly an overlap. T is bigger than T prime and 0 comma T prime is sitting inside 0 comma T. So, these are not independent random variables, therefore, you cannot factor it out immediately and there is a non-trivial autocorrelation. So, one way to do this would be to say let us look at it like this. Let us look at n of 0 t prime n of t prime to t. Let us look at this one here. Now, just for reference, so you have 0 t prime and t on the x axis uh, on the t axis. So, let us look at this uh, quantity and ask its expectation value. Uh, are these independent random variables? Yes, yes because they are not overlapping. So, they are definitely independent random variables. So, this is equal to n of 0 t prime n of t prime t and what is n of 0 t prime? Lambda t prime. And what is this? Lambda of t minus t prime. So, this is equal to lambda squared t t prime minus lambda squared t prime squared. That is certainly true, right. But you can also write this as n of 0, comma t times n of 0 t minus n of 0 t prime. And then take the average. By definition, n of t prime t is this difference, right? So that's equal to, sorry, n of zero t prime, and then this. So this is equal to n of zero t prime, n of zero t minus n of zero t prime squared, and then the average. n squared of this fellow here. Right? So, I want to find this quantity that is the correlation I want to find autocorrelation. So, I move this to the right hand side and I have shown that this is already equal to that out there. So, this quantity therefore, this implies this is equal to this fellow plus lambda squared t t prime minus lambda squared t prime squared. But what is this quantity? Because we already have this other result. We have this result which says variance of n of 0 t equal to lambda t because for a Poisson the variance is the same as the mean, right. That means that n squared average is lambda t plus the square of the average lambda squared t squared, right. So, if you put that in this is equal to lambda t prime plus lambda squared t prime squared plus lambda squared t t prime minus lambda squared t prime squared. Right? And this cancels, this guy cancels. So, it says this autocorrelation is lambda t prime plus lambda squared t t prime not a function of t minus t prime. But the average is not 0 here n of 0 t or n of 0 comma t prime does not have a 0 average. So, the autocorrelation should be defined as the covariance by subtracting out the mean. So, what we need is the following what we need. So, let us write these results down. So, what we have is expectation n of 0 t prime n of 0 t this fellow is lambda t prime plus 
lambda squared t, t, t prime t. But what we need is delta n of 0 t prime, delta n of 0 t expectation right and this stands by the way for n of 0 t prime minus expectation n of 0 t prime that is the definition of this delta. So, what is this quantity equal to? All you have to do is to take this guy here uh, and subtract out the product of the means right and what is the product of the means? Lambda t prime times lambda t prime t. Uh, so, this is equal to is lambda t prime okay and we took this to be t prime to be less than t what happens if I took t prime to be bigger than t? It will get replaced. So, in general this guy here is equal to lambda times min ok. It is not stationary ok. So, this n of 0 comma t I mean it has a correlation this random variable has a correlation. So, the number of such epochs such instance of time in a Poisson sequence in any interval of time the correlation function of that is given by this. Okay. And of course, when this is equal to that t prime equal to t this is equal to t lambda t as you expect it is a variance that is it. Okay. Now, this t this linearity is at the origin of the linear dependence with t in all these diffusal processes this is what is finally going to uh, finally leads to this whole business of uh, linear dependence. So, it comes straight from here from this Poisson sequence because now if I attach a process to this by saying there is a velocity process which goes either plus c or minus c at these instants of time the statistics of that carries over signatures from this ok and so on. But remember that this process here how is it correlated? Now, it is the xi process what is the correlation of xi? This is a stationary Markov process definitely a stationary Markov process a jump process and what is this equal to? Xi of t prime xi of t what is this equal to? We have looked at the symmetric case where there is a plus c and a minus c not c 1 and a c 2 and the other symmetry is that we I said that it is going to reverse with a mean rate which is the same whether it is going from down to up or up to down if it is some lambda then what is the correlation here? It is exponential it is c squared e to the minus 2 lambda t 2 lambda actually mod t minus t prime it is stationary it is stationary. So, you must distinguish between these processes they look very similar to each other they are very closely related to each other, but uh, this is in time this is just a set of points in time uncorrelated that is got its own statistics. But now if I attach to it a process which goes up or down in this fashion this becomes a Markov process and then it is exponentially correlated in this fashion. Now, we are asking the next question what is the integral of this process going to look like what is this? that is our dichotomous diffusion right and now this x in the, the x space is all the whole of the real axis say the whole of the x axis right? we would like to know what its statistics are and it is a continuous process this is a jump process, but the x itself the integral is a continuous process although it has those kinks whenever the velocity reverses and we are looking at the statistics of that. Right? Now, you could ask can I get this process. So, let us keep this aside for a moment and we can ask can I get this process from a discrete random walk? After all what is being remembered is the velocity namely the direction of motion. So, can I get this from a linear lattice by doing a random walk on it with the following kinds of rules. So, once again I have a lattice whose sites are labeled by the integer j this is j plus 1 j minus 1 and I ask for the probability that you are at j 
at time step n. So, I take steps of tau time step tau and there is a lattice constant a which I will introduce subsequently, but for the moment we will just label the lattice points by the integers on an infinite linear lattice and I want to know p of j comma n, but with the following proviso just as earlier I said in the case of uh, the DMP I said we would like to remember the velocity whether it is plus c or minus c the analog here would be to say is it moving to the right or is it moving to the left. Hmm? So, I really have two different probabilities I have a p r and a p l. So, it is at this point at time n moving rightwards or moving leftwards and there is a certain rate at which or a certain probability with which it will reverse direction. So, let us put a bias in it in the following sense instead of saying I toss a coin with probability alpha I move to the right with 1 minus alpha I move to the left if it is a biased coin I now use the same biased coin I say with probability alpha I continue in the same direction as the previous step and with probability 1 minus alpha I reverse my direction. Then what are the rate equations for this? P r of j n must be equal to hmm. clearly alpha times P r of j minus 1 at time n minus 1. So, I have come here and I am moving right and I continue rightward. So, I am in the right it is going to contribute to P r hmm. plus a beta which is 1 minus alpha p l of j minus 1 n namely I am here at time n minus 1, but now I reverse direction and move towards the right and therefore I am here in the right moving state. Okay. Those are the only two contributions. What about p l? Well, this is clearly beta times p r of j plus 1 n minus 1 because I am here at time n minus 1 and I want to contribute to the left moving guy whereas I am moving right there. So, I am a switch and then move left and the probability is beta right plus alpha times p l of j plus 1 n minus 1. So, I am here moving left and I jump here with probability alpha and I continue to move left and therefore, I contribute to p l. Okay. So, these are the rate equations and the point is to solve these now for any given alpha between 0 and 1. Okay. So, the solution is not that trivial as you can see there are two coupled unknowns here p r and p l, but in principle this can be solved this set can be solved. What we are interested in doing is taking a continuum limit of it so that we get some diffusion type equations for it. And how would you take this limit? Well, the first thing you do is to say that the lattice constant should go to 0. So, let us put j a equal to x and this is the lattice spacing n tau equal to t this is the time step. And it's clear, yeah. Why isn't it No, you're asking what is the contribution to one of these, say PR, to be in the right moving state at this point at time n, right? It can only come from here or here because we have allowed only nearest neighbor jumps. But then it could have come from different states, and these are the only states from which you can feed into this point here that is it. Okay. We are not writing a rate equation, we are writing an actual difference equation for finite n. Right? Okay. So, we have a time step and we have a space step a and clearly the velocity c. So, you must write limit a tends to 0, tau tends to 0 such that a over tau equal to c. That will tell me the speed. Now, what about the rate of reversal? Well, reversal is measured by the probability beta. 
So, clearly you also want limit beta tends to 0 tau tends to 0 such that beta over tau equal to nu. This is the rate of reversals okay. or lambda in the case of the dichotomous process the parameter I used. I will use nu because I want to distinguish this from that lambda do not want to confuse it with a dichotomous process all the time. So, let us call it nu some nu. So, I put those limits in here, I put this in here, I write j times a n times tau and then subtract from it the n minus 1 part and so on and write differential equations now. And then with a little bit of manipulation exactly as we did in the case of the diffusion equation, you end up with the following, you end up with delta over delta t. So, let me call this, let us use some shorthand notation, del t plus c del x these are partial derivatives with respect to x and t of p r of x comma t. This is a probability density function whereas, these are probabilities. This is the probability density, the positional probability density function at time t to be at the point at the point x in the right moving state. Okay. What is this equal to? What can this possibly be equal to? Now comes the gain and loss terms because we are writing a rate equation nu times p l of x comma t minus p r of x comma t. That is the only possibility. Remember this guy here is like the total derivative, it is like the convective derivative, this is delta over delta x, this is delta over delta t. So, d over dt of this guy must be equal to this is the gain term, that is the loss term. Okay. And the other one has a velocity minus c, so it is minus c del x p l of x comma t nu times, now this is p r. those are the two equations rate equations okay. and they are coupled, they are coupled to each other. Okay. So, we need to solve these equations and these are the solution, these are the equations for dichotomous diffusion. Okay. The total probability p of x comma t where you have integrated or summed over the bo both the velocity states plus c and minus c that when you integrate over x must be equal to 1 at all times. So, we want this condition normalization condition integral minus infinity to infinity dx p of x t will be 1 for all t greater than equal to 0, where this quantity by definition is p r of x t plus p l. that should be normalized. Okay. What are the initial conditions? Well, this depends on what conditions you would like to specify. So, let us do our usual kind of specification. We say that the particle starts at x equal to 0 at t equal to 0. Right? Now, you could put whatever initial conditions you like, but the most symmetric ones would be to say it starts from 0 and it starts with equal probability moving right or left. You do not care. Right? So, the initial conditions, this would give us symmetric, nice symmetric solutions. Incidentally, you can solve this for any, you can solve this set of equations for suitable initial conditions and boundary conditions could be quite general, but let us look at the simplest cases. Initial conditions would be P r of x 0 equal to P l of x 0 equal to delta of x half of delta half a delta function okay half delta of x half delta of x half in the left state half in the right equally probable right. 
So, when you add the 2 you get a delta of x and you integrate it you get 1. But we need conditions on this because these are equations which involve derivatives you need conditions on delta deltas as well right. Because you see what you can do to solve these equations is to eliminate one of them you can eliminate p r or p l and get another equation for it right. So, let us do that and you see what the equation looks like. So, by the way this guy here starts looking suspiciously like the wave equation is going to emerge right. It looks like one factor of this wave equation. So, what should I do? I want to eliminate P L. So, the thing to do is to I know what this operator on P L is. So, let us put this operator on both sides of this equation here. So, uh, del T minus C del x del T plus C del x P R equal to nu times uh, this guy on P L that is this guy which is this. So, there is a nu squared P R minus nu squared P L that takes care of this fellow here and then I have to take this operator and act on this. So, that is equal to minus nu del T minus C del x on P R. right. Now, what does this give you that tells you the second derivative partial derivative and then there is a del T C times del T del x and a del x del T, but it does not matter which order you do this and those cross terms cancel and then you have C squared with a minus sign del x x second derivative not the first derivative squared, but the second derivative of the derivative. So, it says del T T minus C squared del x x of P r equal to nu squared P r uh, minus nu del T P r plus nu C del x P r minus nu squared P l. Now, what should I do for that P l? What, what should I do to get rid of that P l? I want an equation to eliminate P l. I use this, I use this equation for P l, right. So, I have a formula for nu times P l. So, let me write this to be equal to minus nu times whatever is there for nu P l and that is equal to del T plus C del x P r plus nu P r. Right? And if there is any justice in the world this says nu squared P r cancels against this then a nu C del x P r cancels this fellow cancels against this and you get this 2 nu del T P r. So, we find to get an equation which says del T T minus plus plus 2 nu del T minus C squared del x x P r equal to 0. You get a second order hyperbolic equation now. It looks like the wave equation except it is got that uh, reversal term times mu out here. This again. Okay. What would be the equation for P L? P L differs from P R in by a very symmetric thing the C becomes a minus C in that state right. But this equation here is a square in C. So, what would you expect is the equation for P L? The same equation I expect exactly and therefore for P and therefore for this guy too I expect them to obey the same equation. How do you then differentiate this between these solutions? 
but the initial condition is the same for both of them the initial condition is the same now that looks like it says PR equal to PL and that is not true that is not true right. I agree with you that this is going to be PR comma L equal to 0 exactly the same equation pardon me uh, why does it give me 2 solutions no once I solve that equation I get solution is unique once I specify the initial conditions what is the order of the differential equation in time it is second order so for either PR or for PL I need one more initial condition on the derivative the time derivative right I need to know what is PR dot at 0 huh? how do I find that how will I find that How, how will I find that initial condition I have I have all the data here I have this here feed it into the differential equation feed it into the differential equation at t equal to 0 after all the differential equation should sat be satisfied even at t equal to 0 right. So, feed it in and what do you get you get p r dot of x comma 0. plus c del x and this is half delta of x and each of these is half delta of x so at equal to 0 they cancel. So, what is p r dot at x comma 0 move this to the right hand side. So, minus c over 2 delta prime of x why not? I define I am not defining the square of a delta function defining its derivative it is a very singular object yes, but I define it by integration by parts always after all how do I define an integral of a delta function I select the value at the, where the delta function fires for a derivative I do integration by parts on the test function. I th think of it physically what is a delta function it is a function which looks like this goes up very sharply and comes down in the limit what does the derivative of this function look like this is an even function. So, the derivative has got to be an odd function the slope at the origin is 0 for this. So, the derivative vanishes at the origin right and what does it look like well the slope is increasing very rapidly going to 0 and then decreasing very rapidly and then coming back to 0. So, this function looks like this very sharp hmm. what would the second derivative look like goes up and down a few more times and then goes to 0. So, it is getting more and more singular I agree, but it is defined it is defined hmm. after all one way of defining a delta function or any distribution is through its Fourier transform. So, the inverse Fourier transform of a constant is a delta function and differentiation is equal to multiplication by k. So, the inverse Fourier transform of i k is the delta prime apart from some sign and then i k squared is the second derivative and so on. So, I can define those things. Hmm. So, it is minus c over 2 delta prime x on this side and what is p l dot of x comma 0 what is this equal to plus c over 2. So, I expect the solutions to be different P r and P l because the initial conditions are different, but they both obey this equation and the initial condition on P of x t itself is even more different right. So, P of x comma 0 equal to delta of x P dot of x comma 0 equal to 0 not going anywhere with these two add up okay. So, these are three different solutions to the same differential equation. Okay. Now, you are faced with a thing like this what would you do next it is not the wave equation because there is this guy sitting here 
in between. Okay. Now, what is the effect of this nu? What is it physically doing actually? What's, this nu comes from the dichotomous Markov process, the velocity is reversing all the time, right. So, it is preventing this guy from becoming ballistic motion. Every time it is moving fast, it is reversed, it is not getting anywhere, right. So, it is acting like some kind of dissipation in that sense. So, you would expect that if I get rid of that dissipative factor, then you would have something like the wave equation possibly, right. Now, that can be easily arranged. Incidentally, is, does this start looking like the diffusion equation at all? Is it like the diffusion equation ever? Well, if you get rid of this, it is exactly like the diffusion equation. So, we keep that in the back of our mind. It looks like if you let c tending to infinity which is very reasonable because I remember I said that the formal velocity of a Brownian particle is actually infinite and c came from a over tau, but the diffusion constant in the diffusion equation came from the limit a squared over tau. a over tau is infinite and a squared you put in one more a which goes to 0 and then you get a finite limit right. So, it is very reasonable that c tending to infinity and nu tending to infinity such that c squared over 2 nu tends to diffusion constant d gives you the diffusion equation back again. Okay. So, we should keep this in the back of our mind that uh, the moment you let this limit you take this limit in the solution to that equation we should be able to recover the diffusion equation solution the Gaussian solution. But right now the solution to this the envelope P is or R and L these are not like the Gaussian at all. But the central limit theorem still operates and you will in the long time limit you should be able to get back the diffusion equation. So, we will come back we will we will come back to this. Meanwhile, since we have a guess that this nu is creating this problem this term here and there is dissipation in the problem. So, let us set P R of x t equal to e to the minus nu t some phi r of x t and do the same thing for l. There is got to be some damping out. So, let us remove that and then see what happens right. Now, this is uh, not hard to show if you plug that in that this term will get cancelled out this goes away here. But you will have terms which come from the second derivative of acting on this guy here and that pulls down a factor nu squared. So, this is a matter of algebra all you have to do is to put this in here and see what happens to this Then let us write the answer down and then this will imply that del t t minus c squared del x x minus nu squared. ends up with that. Okay. It does not change the initial conditions because as you can see there is this guy here you can put in find out what are the new initial conditions etcetera and write it down. Okay. What does this equation remind you of? It is not the wave equation, but it is a Klein Gordon equation it is exactly like the Klein Gordon this is like the box operator in 3, 3 plus 1 dimensions it is a wave operator and then there is a constant square. Okay. So, if you can solve the Klein Gordon equation you can write the solutions now for this. You have to specify the moment you give me anything this operator acting on some function of x t equal to 0 and if you tell me what the function does at t equal to 0 and its first derivative does at t equal to 0 arbitrary functions of x I can write the explicit solution down ok. But we need it in this very special case these things here and let me write the solution down the solutions look like this. So, let us define sorry to use this variable, but it is a standard symbol define xi to be equal to square root of c square t square minus x square. You expect that factor to appear all the time because this this operator has appeared, so this is going to appear. 
Now, we immediately can see intuitively that since the velocity is never going is always the speed is always c, it is clear that if you start at t equal to 0 at x equal to 0, you are never going to go beyond the point c t in time t. Similarly, you are never going to go to the left of the point minus c t. Unlike the normal diffusion equation where the velocity was infinite and you started with a delta function at the origin at t equal to 0 and it immediately spread out into a Gaussian which had an infinite extent for arbitrarily small t, very narrow Gaussian it is true, but still it was arbitrarily extended. Here that is not the case, the envelope, the diffusion envelope will end at plus minus ct. So, the graph will actually look like this. So, you start with the delta function here, but then as a function of x for a fixed t, p of x comma t, p r and p l will have a symmetry in the following sense. It is not hard to see that p r of minus x t equal to p l of x t. You have that symmetry at every instant of time with those symmetric initial conditions. Okay. Then it is cut off between minus c t and plus c t. And what you really have is in p r you have a delta function spike, in p l you have a delta function spike and in between you have some function which do, does this kind of thing which we will write down. Okay. So, the solution it turns out looks like this, let me write the solution down the half remains except this delta function which was half of delta of x at t equal to 0 is really delta of x minus c t as you would expect. It propagates this is the ballistic part propagates right. That is the contribution which comes from no reversal of sign just keeps going and then there is a portion which has uh, the rest of it which is plus let me see if I remember this right an envelope which is theta of x plus c t minus theta of x minus c t. This restricts you to this region here that is a square pulse of unit height which tells you that its solution is restricted to that region times times nu over 4 c of i naught of nu xi over c. What you need is a dimensionless quantity here and because of the symmetry of the differential operator, remember that uh, xi was defined to be equal to c squared t squared minus x squared to the power of half, the positive square root of that. This has dimensions of t inverse, that has dimensions of length, so it is a velocity and it cancels here mm, plus c t minus x over xi i 1 of nu xi over c. These are modified Bessel functions which we have seen many or very often appear very often in random mock problems. We know what their properties are, their entire functions of their arguments and so on. Okay. And similarly p l of x t is one half delta of x plus c t that is this delta function here plus the same thing theta of x plus c t and theta of x minus c t nu over 4 c i naught of c plus c t plus x over xi These are the solutions which uh, satisfy the initial conditions on the two uh, on the two functions p r and p l, and of course the whole thing is a p is a sum of and the whole thing is multiplied so e to the new t times that e to the new t times that because there is that damping factor sitting there all the time. Okay. 
So, what happens when you sum the 2 is that this fellow becomes nu over 2 c times i naught, but then this x and that minus x cancel out and then you have 2 c t the c cancels here and you have uh, nu t over c etcetera etcetera. and you are guaranteed due to the presence of these quantities these uh, theta functions here that it is restricted to this region here. And of course, p of x comma t is a symmetric function of x because it does not distinguish between left and right. Okay. Now, we can check if it will go to the correct diffusion limit or not that is not very hard to do, but before that we need to also find out does this diffuse what is the mean square displacement going to look like etcetera. We do not know what the mean square displacement looks like we need to compute that explicitly. So, we need to compute x squared average, but it is sensible to compute x squared average by not by solving the differential equation, but and I am going to leave this as an exercise by solving a much simpler equation. You know what uh, each of them does p r and p l and what p does we know the differential equation for p right. So, all you have to do is to argue that x squared of t by the way what is the average value of x of t? This is equal to integral minus infinity to infinity d x x squared p of x comma t by definition and it is obvious that in this case this fellow vanishes pl outside plus or minus c t on either side. So, the integral runs from minus c t to plus c t mm, times some Bessel function <laughs> it is too messy to do it that way. Mm. What you should do is to say I start with the differential equation. So, I have del t t minus c square del x x plus 2 nu del t p equal to 0. multiply by x squared and integrate from minus infinity to infinity or from minus c t to plus c t mm. integrate this equation here. Get rid of these by integrating by parts and then you will get a differential equation for x squared average as a function of t and initial value is 0 right. So, you can compute what the actual average is explicitly. So, I leave it to show that this quantity turns out to be c squared over 2 nu squared 2 nu t minus 1 plus e to the minus 2 nu t. Show. write a differential equation for this guy in time ordinary differential equation and solve it with appropriate boundary conditions to get this solution. Mm. It is linear in t at long times. Mm. What would you expect it will do at as t tends to 0? It should be ballistic it should go like c squared t squared finished. Mm. And indeed it does because you can see that the 1 cancels the new t cancels the next term is of order new square t square the new square cancels and you have c square t square over 2 factorial the 2 cancels and so on. So, okay. so it is precisely c square t square for very small t for very large t what do you expect? what is meant by large t? Hmm? New t much much bigger than 1 right. The velocity correlation time what is the velocity correlation time in this problem? In the original diffusion problem there was a gamma there and I said the velocity correlation time was gamma inverse. What is the velocity correlation time here? Because we know this is a dichotomous Markov process we know it is exponentially correlated. What is the velocity correlation time? 2 nu inverse 1 over 2 nu. So, when t is much much bigger than nu, nu t much much bigger than 1, 
can drop this, you can drop this, you're left with this. At c squared over, this goes away. So this goes to c squared Remember, in the diffusion limit, we said that the d, the diffusion constant was c squared over 2 nu. So, this says that it is equal to 2 d t, which is exactly what the diffusion limit is. Okay. So, this thing here what do you think happens to it when t becomes very, very large? We are really saying that mod x is much, much less than c t or t becomes very, very large. t becomes much, much larger than mod x over c, right. So, the condition, the diffusion limit is that t much, much bigger than mod x over c but when c becomes infinite, this is simply saying that t is positive. That is what we are looking at in any case, right, positive t. What happens to this profile? It moves further and further right, but it is multiplied by e to the minus nu t because this guy goes to the right hand side. So, after a longer time, it likes like this. Finally, in the diffusion limit, this goes away and you end up with a Gaussian. You are back to that and we should be able to see that explicitly. So, let us see, we can see that explicitly. You see, you look at, uh, so you agree that if I write P r plus P l and I put the e to the minus nu t on the right hand side and let nu t tend to infinity, the e to the minus nu t, the delta function goes away, goes to 0 height and I have only got to worry about these guys. Hmm? So, let us see what that does. I have to make t very, very large in it. So, I have an e to the minus nu t multiplied by i naught or i 1, hmm? does not matter. And what is it going to look like? Look at this function here for instance, look at i naught. Hmm? What does uh, the argument t is becoming very large. That is the only thing that is getting very large. So, xi is getting very large because xi is square root of c square t square etcetera. Huh? And what happens to i naught when the argument becomes very large? So, let us write this out properly. i naught of z goes when mod z becomes very large e to the z over square root of 2 pi z. In fact, i j of z does that for all positive integer j, non-negative integer j and i minus j is the same as i j. Now, what does i do as t becomes very large? C t you take it out and then you have 1 minus x squared over c squared t squared to the power a half. So, it is roughly this guy here, right. Uh, sorry, yeah. So, this is equal to c t minus x squared over 2 c t. This is equal to. So, xi goes to this for very, very large c. So, it says nu xi over c becomes nu t, nu t. So, our solution looks like e to the minus nu t and then e to this guy. So, it is e to the power nu t minus nu x squared over 2 c squared t divided by square root of whatever it is. This is the leading term as t becomes very large. So, apart from some constants, it goes like this. this cancels against that and you are back to the Gaussian solution e to the minus nu x squared over 2 c squared c. But remember that c squared over 2 nu was the diffusion constant. 
So, this is twice the diffusion constant here and there is another 2 here. So, it is 4 d t. So, this guy really is going to e to the minus x squared over 4 d t over square root of t apart from some constants. Okay. So, that is why I said that that envelope becomes a Gaussian goes to the Gaussian. So, we have a very fairly complicated process, but the fact remains that it finally at the end of the day reduces to the diffusion equation in the diffusion limit in a well defined limit, right. But it is a much smoother process than Brownian motion is much more tractable and so on. In particular, we can now answer the following question. We have this thing going up and down, we have its uh, sample space, uh, its uh, sample paths look like this. and then the same slope over again. And we really have when we found P r and P l, we have actually found the joint distribution in position and velocity because the velocity is either plus or minus c. So, we have really found P of x comma v comma t and once we have done that and it is not a Gaussian, some crazy Bessel functions, right. Once we have done that, we know that the variances of these guys are finite at any time t. So, we can find what is the rate of level crossing. Okay. We can ask if I put a threshold here, how often does it cross? What is the mean rate? In particular, how often does it cross 0? The origin itself and all those formulas we derive for level crossing can be applied immediately to this. So, do that and we will I'll write down the solution next time. So, find let us take a simpler case, let us take the simplest instance. So, find the average value of the number of times it crosses the threshold 0 in a time interval 0 to t. Number of 0 crossings. So, if you are looking at PR, it is going to give you the up crossings and PL will give you the down crossings and you can compute it explicitly You can compute uh, what is the exact contribution in this case. I put x equal to 0 as a threshold because it simplifies the formulas because you can see that if you put x equal to 0, this xi becomes just CT and then it is much easier to handle in this case. So, use those level crossing formulas to discover what this is. And then we would be able to say on the average how many crossings will there be in a time interval t? How will it go with t? What is your guess? So, the question I am asking is if this were the 0, if this were the 0 level in x here as a function of t, the question asked is in a time interval 0 to capital T. how many on the average crossings are there of this up and down both together? It will of course, be an increasing function of capital T. The question is how is it going to increase? What would be your guess? Will it go like t? Will it go like e to the power t? Will it go like square root of t? What would you think? So, work this out work this out. Of course, as t becomes very large, it makes a huge difference what power of t is a crossing, but it is explicit. Here you can actually get an explicit formula and we want the large t limit. Find this thing for large t. As a matter of fact, you can even find the variance of this number. that is not, uh, re not really very much harder to do. You can even compute the variance of this number although that is a little more intricate we did not talk about it in level crossing, but you can compute even the variance in this case. So, I want you to find out what is the power law. It increases like a power law not clearly not exponential, but increases like a power of t <coughs> and the question is what power is it going to be. 
So, that is a useful thing to know because whenever you model something by a dichotomous diffusive process of this kind, by the way this random walk is only a paradigm. I mean this x is not does not have to be positioned, it could be anything, it could be a large number of things. Just like a Poisson sequence will modify or model all kinds of things, models the rate at which telephone calls um, arrive, uh, rate at which uh, people arrive in a public place. I mean it is a very large number of uh, possible applications. Similarly, here this process, this dichotom integral of the dichotomous process, it is also is a continuous process, models a large number of random phenomena and it would be interesting to find out what are the threshold crossings, what does it look like. So, so do this and then we will take it from here. And I want to emphasize again that P uh, x in this case is not a Markov process, it is definitely not a Markov process. On the other hand, x comma v together is a Markov process. Okay. So, it is jointly a Markov process and V alone is a Markov process, it is a dichotomous Markov process. Okay. So, this is exactly as it was in the case of ordinary diffusion as well, but there x was also the integral of white noise was also a Markov process. In this case the integral of a dichotomous Markov noise uh, process is not a Markov process. Okay. But together the two form a vector process definitely is. Okay. All right, so let me stop here. By the way, I forgot to mention that the dichotomous Markov process is also called a random telegraph signal with some modifications of rates and things like that. And these two equations we wrote down, the coupled equations for PR and PL, they are called the telegraphers equations because they also appear in the equations for old transmission lines we are not interested in that aspect of it here, but you might see in the literature the telegraphers equations. The equation with the two new del t in between that is a telegraphers equation. Okay. All right, so let me stop here today. Okay.